So the first thing we're going to start with today is discussing the quiz. How did you find it? Were the questions clear? Yes, they were clear. Yes, but clear. One so of the, the questions that I intentionally added was to explain, like, there are two types of questions. Tell me the strategy and why you used it. And then tell me what the cultural items are. And this question is very important because we're going to have similar question in our tests and the final. And it's not just going to be uh, about like identify the cultural item. I might ask you to identify the literary device. I might ask you to identify the like the parts you believe should be omitted. So you should always pay attention to what I'm asking you to do. So I want the strategy because some of you, instead of adding the cultural item, they added the strategy that should be used. And this is wrong. I don't want the strategy. I want the cultural item. And some of you, actually a lot of you wrote um, like more cultural items than there are. Out of the ordinary is not a cultural item. I don't know why so many of you wrote out of the ordinary as a, as a cultural item. It's not a cultural item. The two cultural items in the quiz were magical and Sandman. And I thought like magical was clear. Uh, Sandman was there to test if you have, if you were able to guess if it's a cultural item or not because um, it was capitalized. And I wanted to see if you could again guess if this is a cultural item or not. And most of you did. Some of you actually know what a Sandman is. In similar questions, do not talk too much. I just want a cultural item. If I ask you to explain this particular item, explain it. If I ask you to just list it, just list it, okay? Uh, okay. Yeah, it sounded like Sindibad, right? Sandman, Sindibad. Why you consider magical as a cultural item? We have Seher in our culture. Also, it isn't a cultural item in English culture, which is strange in ours. Can someone answer this question? Can someone answer Samah Zakut's question? Why did we consider magical as a cultural item? Hmm. We discussed this when we discussed Harry Potter. Maryam. Is it because I know that it's forbidden our culture? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The mic no. is Maryam. Maryam first, because she wrote yeah. it, raised her hand. Yeah. Okay, because uh, there's no magic in our Islam. It's haram in our Islam. So it's something uh, indulged to our culture from the Western culture. Good. So if I say something like Layla Sihriya, for example, so what is Layla Sahiya in Arabic? Do we don't Istithna'iya. Good, beautiful, wonderful. Yeah. So basically using um, the word sihr, sahir, saharni in Arabic, it doesn't have first good connotations. Second, it's not used as much as it is used in English. Like we said, they say she has angelic eyes. So the idea of culture here, it's not that magic doesn't exist in Arabic culture. It's that it's not used in, in daily life. I mean, I'm sure you see sometimes on Facebook posts that uh, talk about how some people do magic and magicians generally are hated in in islamic cultures because again the description of magicians and wizards in the holy quran are negative so how can i have something that is negative in our culture uh, used in a sentence as a positive description of someone's eyes and that's why not i considered magical as a cultural item it is the language that considered magic as a cultural item, okay? Um, 
Can we say something? And you are? And I, I know. Samah, Samah, support. Okay. I know everything that you say said that uh, it is forbidden and that's why we don't translate Harry Potter and so on. But I am saying that uh, I think that we can't consider it as a cultural item because it is presented in our Arabic or Islamic culture. It is mentioned, for example, in Quran. So it is not a cultural item in English uh, society that, uh, that is not, for example, mentioned in our society. I think it is presented and mentioned in our culture, you know, even well, if it is you, not brought I or- I didn't hear the last thing I said. I said that using magical as a description of something that is good is not found in our culture. Yani, I don't say, Aynaha sahiratan. Okay? And if it exists, it's not like, it's not common, it's not acceptable, and you would feel like it doesn't exist in, in this particular context, in this particular description, it doesn't exist in Arabic. When can I use the word sihr? Uh -huh. So if the source text talks about like magic, for example, it talks about the Islamic point of view about magic. So you have to have, you have to write magic. You have to write sihr. And people will understand the word sihr here. But I wouldn't say kalamuhu sahir. And if I do say kalamuhu sahir, it's like, again, it exists, but how acceptable is it? Okay, so that's why I'm I'm referring to it, or it is referred to as a cultural item. Okay. So the first question was, Do you think you are this neighborhood Superman? So Antar uh, is basically a is known in Arabic culture to represent uh, the knight, the person who is a person who is like courageous, a protector. And in the translation, it was substituted to Superman. You think you are this neighborhood Superman. Superman is known to be protective, uh, caring, guardian, and so on. And some might say Superman is a fictional character. Antar is not a fictional character. So how did we substitute a real character with a fictional character? This is true to a great extent, but the word Antar has been used metaphorically in Arabic for, for a long time that it's been added to like stories, uh, novels of, of a character whose name is Antar and has the, again, characteristics of of, of, uh, of knighthood or of chivalry or, and so on. So basically, uh, if they're going to substitute it, Superman sounds a reasonable substitution. And again, this is substitution. It's not lexical creation because Superman already exists in English language. It's not compensation because nothing was lost, okay? It's not definition because there is no definition. It's just a word for a word. And I even underlined it, okay? Uh, I, I didn't want to underline it at first, but then I thought maybe I should underline it so that you would know what you're looking at. So here, Antar was substituted with Superman. This should have been an easy question. Some of you made a mistake, but maybe, I don't know, factors of time and the internet. Uh, okay, second question. The coronavirus, virus corona. It's not a footnote. It's not a definition. It's definitely not a call. It's borrowing. You know, it's the same word, only it was uh, written in Arabic uh, alphabet, right? So it is borrowing, like intifada. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Um, yeah. About translating um, coronavirus. Sometimes it is written COVID-19. So mm -hmm. if we have like uh, COVID-19, how, how would we translate it? It's also been used COVID-19 in Arabic. So whether COVID-19 yes. or virus corona, same thing, borrowing. So we can use a virus corona or COVID-19? Yeah, because it's the same thing. It's like Muhammad Abu Anwar. 
whether you write in Hamad or Abu Anwar, it's the same person. Sara. Uh, Miss has got the Miss like in the virus corona. حطتها كل هي لانها ما كانتش انا موجوده من قبل فجديد انضافت على القاموس طب هذه مترجمه مترجمه اه مترجمه ايه يعني هل هو كت يعني الان ايش كلمه فيروس باللغه العربيه كائنات فيروس. دقيقه مثلا ايش كائنات دقيقه انا قصد ان هو الفيروس كورونا نفسها ما كانتش موجوده يعني جديد اجت في فرق في فرق بين كالك وبوروينج تمام وفي فرق بين كالك وليترال ترانزليشن اللي انت بتحكيه هو الفرق ما بين الليترال ترانزليشن والكالك اللي انت بتحكيه انه هل هي موجوده ولا مش موجوده هذا لما أفرق أقول إذا كانت كولك ولا literal translation تمام؟ لكن البوروينج هو أني أنا أخذ نفس الحروف تمام؟ نفس الصوت نفس كل إشي أحوله من الألفابت تبع اللغة الموجودة عندي للألفابت تبع اللغة الثانية هذا بوروينج زي يعني زي كلمة زي كلمة برانواش نعم زي كلمة برانواش لما كتبناها برانواش برانواش كولك برين واش مش بروينج لما, ك... لما كتبناها بالاحرف يعني بالعكس كانت نفس آه. تمام لو انا كتبتها باحرف عربي بتصير فعلا بتصير آه. بروينج تمام لكن لما تمام. انا ترجمت المفردات تمام انا بترجم المفردات اذا انا ترجمت المفردات كما هي وهذه المفردات مع بعض هيك موجودين زي قطعه من الحلوى بمعنى سهله مش موجوده في اللغه اللي عندي اللي هي اللغه المترجم لها بيكون اسمها بروينج إذا كان خلص موجودة من زمان ومستخدمة يعني مثلا إحنا اليوم صارت كولك بعد 20 سنة بتبطل كولك بتصير خلص literal translation تمام؟ تمام ليش؟ لأنه خلص صارت مندرجة موجودة بسمة بسمة Yes, uh, I want to say that uh, coronavirus is uh, available, was available before we, uh, this, uh, before uh, the scientists um, discovered it. It's a type of viruses, yes. Yes. Okay, so what are the cultural items in this sentence? We have two, magical, sandman, la magical night, wala out of the ordinary, ordinary, well, a sandman for the beautiful, okay? It's an item, one thing. So it's magical and sandman. Which strategy should you use here in the translation? So I was wearing my good luck charm, so everything was going well. Is a good luck charm? في واحد عند واحدة عندها نيكلس تمام هذا النيكلس هي بتلبسه للحظ الجيد تميمة مش عارفة ايش بيسموها وي دونت هاف ذات اني انا البس سوار بريسلت واعتبر انه انا لما البسه حظي بيكون منيح لما ما البسهاش انسى خلص بط... في يصير في عندي تطير بتطير وبكون حاسة انه اليوم حيكون سيء ومش عارفة ايش This is the meaning of good luck charm طيب do we have that in our culture? No, we don't. So, we don't use footnote. ما بشرحه ليش؟ لأنه أنا أساساً مش محتاج أحطه في التارجت تكست ولا definition. Definition وفوتنوت تقريباً نفس الإشي. وكالك مرة تانية. It's a, a cultural item, تمام? That, let's say, contradicts uh, certain beliefs in the culture and religion of the Arabs. Sirin. Uh, yes, miss. I have a question regarding the previous item. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, why is why is magical a uh, cultural uh, item? Like I see it having no cultural connotations. The teach me the first. Hmm. Because we asked the first question and we answered it. So we'll keep this for later, or we'll take the recorded uh, lecture. Okay. تمام؟ تمام تمام يس في حد ثاني رفع ايده؟ اوكي ليتس موف فورورد واتس ذا بيست ستراتيجي تو ترانزليت ذا وورد الوضوء 
أردت أن أتعلم كيف أحسن الوضوء رغبة في الثواب الكامل. Uh, borrowing isn't enough. Why? Because انتفاضة is borrowing. And it's established in the target language. And it's quite common. But, and so many words of the, like the word salah can actually be considered a common word in English. It's there. People generally know it. Habibi is really known among English speakers. So these words, we might like use them alone, borrowing them without having to add anything. But particularities such as al wudu, it's something that is like they know salah, but do they know, know wudu? Do they know tahara, for example? Do they know these particularities that are not? Uh, like they know Ramadan, they know Futur, but do they know Suhoor? Like they might know Futur. Futur is common. Ramadan is common. Il Eid is common because it's an international thing and due to globalization, people know these things. But if it's something that is soft, something that is subtle, something that is not uh, like one of the famous things about the Deen or, or about a particular culture, that's where you need to define and borrow. Now, here with this short, very, very short paragraph, it was longer than this, but then I thought maybe I should keep it smaller to see the time that you need to translate it. Now, I need to make some comments first before we begin. Number one, you cannot have, it, it's possible, to have a long sentence in English, it's very much possible. But it, there's a difference between Arabic punctuation and English punctuation. In Arabic, you wouldn't find a lot of full stops. The, we might use a lot of commas. The use of commas in Arabic are different from the use of commas in English. And I think I sent you a guide on how to use punctuation marks. And apparently, most of you did not review how to use the comma. Now. In the quiz, I wasn't very, let's say, uh, I didn't like grade you uh, and, and, and like 100% as I should have. So I ignored the commas, I ignored these mistakes, but I can't ignore them later on because if you deliver a text to a client that has bad punctuation, they're probably never gonna hire you again. Punctuation in English is, very important. Capitalization is very important. You need to review capitalization rules. Eid al-Fitr is a, is, 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 a, is a name of a festival, so it has to be capitalized. Zawiya is a name of a place, so it has to be capitalized. Ramadan is a month, it has to be capitalized. So you need to capitalize the I. So many of you wrote the I small letter. No, I is always capitalized. Uh, if any word that comes after a full stop has to be capitalized. Some of you capitalized words that come after comma, a comma. Words that come after a comma are never capitalized except if they are names and so on. But generally, any word that comes after a comma, a semicolon, these are never capitalized. But words that come after marks, question marks, um, Oh, sorry, question mark, exclamation mark, uh, the colon. These are followed by capitalized letters. Another thing, there is a difference. Some like two pronouns, two types of pronouns that depend on the object when it comes to making them plural or singular. And these are this, that, and there. So these depend on the object. If the object is singular, we use this and that. If the object is plural, we use these or those. So some of you wrote, this is our traditions, which is wrong. These are our traditions, or this is our tradition, okay? Same thing with there. Uh, there. 
depends on the object. We say there's a girl in the house. There are girls in the house, okay? Uh, another thing, you, can, you <laughs> cannot repeat the object if it's already mentioned before. So you say, uh, I can't remember any example now. Remind me to send you an example. <laughs> But basically, if you use, excuse me, can you please mute yourselves? Okay, so uh, like I said, when you use which or where or who or whatever, now these take the object, okay? So you can't go back and say of it or, what I mean is you can't repeat the object twice before and after in the same sentence and remind me to give you an example later on. <clears throat> so one of the things that I was hoping for was that you would remember what we said about ordering information, ordering information and how the natural flow of language in Arabic differs from the natural flow of English. <clears throat> So let's see. أحب الذهاب إلى سوق الزاوية مع الأهل. This is the first cultural item that you cannot omit. Why I can't omit it? Because here it's obvious that the person who's talking is interested in the culture. So it's all about the culture. الزاوية عيد الفطر رمضان عيد الأضحى. So something that is filled with culture cannot be substituted with other cultural items. Why? Because it's all about the culture here. And usually when we substitute, usually when it comes to religious substitution, you don't substitute like in, from English to Arabic, you substitute because most Islam does not accept certain things or the culture of Muslims does not expect uh, accept certain things. Like the joke of the two men who walked into a bar. So two men who walked into a bar becomes restaurant in Arabic. Okay? But I don't go like دَخَلَ رَجُلَانِ إِلَى الْمَطْعَمِ And then I translate it to two men walked into a bar. Does that make sense? Again, not necessarily having a certain cultural item from English to Arabic, to have the same translation from Arabic to English, or to have to be translated using the same strategy from Arabic to English. And we can never, and you should always remember that I can never uh, pretend to be two people. I cannot pretend to separate my, 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 my Islamic character from my translator character. I'm both a translator and a Muslim, which means um, I can't, for example, I'm a translator from English to Arabic and Arabic to English. And someone who is an, like an Arab, an Arabic publisher wants me to, or an Arab publisher wants me to translate something from English to Arabic. And he asks me to make the necessary changes to suit the Arabic culture, okay? Now, when I do that, I don't just do it for the audience. I do it because I'm a Muslim too, and I have a responsibility towards my deen because I can't live separately from my Islamic identity. So if someone who's uh, an Arab and he wants me to translate something for an English audience, and he's like, and for example, the text says, uh, I don't translate that to I hang I hung a, a dream cat, uh, dream catcher on my window, for example. So do you understand what I mean? So we usually substitute not just because of the culture that I'm translating to. Sometimes we substitute because I have to as a Muslim. And I'll give you a, a, another example. Qatala. Uh, but this is related to political translation and to ideologies, and, and we'll talk about it later. But I'll just, I, I just want you to, to get the picture. Okay, so 
بالقرب من معبر ايرز مثلا So this is number one. I can't separate my Palestinian identity from the text I'm translating. طيب مخربين مخربين is that the, the word I'm, I'm using to describe these Palestinians? Okay, what if it was موت ثلاثة مخربين? So am I going to use موت or استشهاد? You, you get what I mean? You get what I mean? Do I say in the target text killed, three Palestinians killed or martyred? But you would say, but in the English culture, martyrdom is not as, as, no, as much known as like it is in, in, like in Arabic culture. I'd say yes. But here, I can't separate, again, my Palestinian identity from the, the like, my 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 task as a translator the 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 the, the issue of, of politics is related to like it's bigger than this and we're going to discuss it in detail later but i wanted you to to just try to understand what we mean when we say culture and cultural items and how what i do from english to arabic is not necessarily the same when i do from arabic to english okay Eid uh, al-Fitr, Ramadan, so Eid al-Fitr, Ramadan, al-Fitr wal adha Now, you should know that some things are international. Some things, like we said, are known to the world. Ramadan is known to the world. To the world. Al-Fitr and al-Adha are somewhat, they, they know what Eid is. Now, here are the mistakes that I've noticed. Number one, when you define, don't use brackets. Brackets have their own way of using, and if you go to the guide on punctuation marks, you would know how to use brackets. Usually we use commas. So between two commas, we add the definition we want. So we add definitions within commas. This is a short text. It's a very, very short text. These are 32 words. It doesn't make sense to add footnotes here, here, and here, and here. Adding four footnotes for one small uh, like chunk is bad. It's wrong. You shouldn't do it. And this is the first time I say about something that's related to translation wrong. Wrong because you can't uh, put your reader in a position where he has to go up, down, up, down, up, down, four times, four times up and down to see what each word means. So this disconnectedness that you create between the reader and the text ruins the text. Always keep it to the minimum. Whatever you can put together, put together, okay? Reorder the information, don't add information. Reorder the information to create a natural flow of language, okay? Okay. Use adjectives, combine words together in order to create that natural flow and you're going to see that now. So let's see. Okay, let's see. Uh, I just want to put it in one place. Hold on. Let me just put it in one place. Okay. I love going to Al Zawiya Souq or Bazaar, but I used Bazaar in the definition. A local popular bazaar in Gaza where all types of sweets are sold. So all types of sweets are sold is, where was it? التي تجدها مجتمعة بكثرة في ذلك السوق. 
So all I did was that I moved this piece of information here because I was going to define it. I needed to define that it was a local bazaar. And at the same time, I have another definition. So if I have two things that define the same word or the same concept or the same term, what I do is that I put them together in a natural way, and then they have to follow the original term or word. Most of you use uh, that lots of suites that you find in it or in that uh, market. Is it wrong? It's not wrong, but is it natural flow or not? That's, that's the question. Does it sound good to the ear or not? We bid the month of fasting, Ramadan, farewell. So here, it was like explaining the month, introducing what it is, without changing much to the text, and again, making it run smoothly. So we bid the month of fasting, Ramadan, farewell. And welcome to breaking the fast read with all the sweets we get. Again, to trying to give them a meaningful text that does not require so much looking, so much searching, so much browsing with their eyes, and then doing so, because you don't need to repeat yourself, this refers to what you do, has become our annual tradition before Eid al-Fitr and al-Adha. And I only used the footnote once, and I wrote, Muslims celebrate two Eids, religious holidays, Al-Fitr, which comes immediately after they fast the whole month in Ramadan, and Al-Adha, in which they sacrifice certain types of animals according to Islamic Shariah teachings. And voila, the text is smooth, it's natural, makes sense, explains itself, is not troubling to the reader. And that's again what a translator should do. It's not about sticking to the structure to the words of the source text as much as it is to create something that is understandable, that put, like keeps the natural flow of the language to the target reader. Okay, makes sense? Yes? Yes. Any comments before we move on? Yes. Mariam, yes. Yes, uh, when, when we see it, uh, we say like uh, about Sokozawia that uh, all types of sweets are sold. I feel like we are framing it because it's not just about sweets. There are many things in it, right? What does the, what does this one say? What does the source text say? Can you read? Yes, the, the, yeah, the writer is, is concerned about the sweets, but Sukkot Zawiya is again, you know, again, to define it. Read, read it's not the just text. about sweets. No, no. Mariam, read the text for me. Read the highlighted part. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Now read this one. Read this one. Where all types of sweets are sold. Is there only? No. Is there only? Is no. only written? Good. So it doesn't no. say, it doesn't, in, in the target text, there is no indication that only sweets are sold in Suq Zawiya. It only says that there are all types of sweets. So... It's true. This does not contradict the fact that there are other things that are sold in this particular market. Like if I say in Metro Market, there are all types where all types of chips are sold. Does this mean that only chips is sold in Metro Market? No. So the target text does not have this. Uh, let's say what you consider is, I don't know how to put it. Like it doesn't say that only sweets are sold in, in this particular market. Makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Got it. 
I'm going to close now and start a new meeting because we're running out of time here. We have Nida and Shada and Mariam. We listen to your questions. 